Hello everyone, check out the extended highlights of The Birds Are Still Singing, an open forum of conversation, communication, and resources hosted by Redeemer Renaissance, CDC, and BET, bringing everybody together. All oh, the birds are still singing. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Safe in his arms. Tonight we're going to bring forth to you the Marist Commission of People with Disabilities. Very good. My name is Lauren DeBrucker. I'm a lifelong Philadelphian. I'm a member of the Mayor's Commission on People with Disabilities. Okay, well, I'm Claudia Tasco. I work at the Mayor's Office on People with Disabilities. Everybody that's just joining, I want y'all like to speak out and like let us know y'all here, you know? Before like we start asking you our questions, like introduce yourself. Um, so my name is Devin Figueroa Vargas, and I'm a person living in long-term recovery. And so what that means for me is this: since September 9th of 2011, I have not used any drugs or alcohol. Something I'm really um, proud of, and have um, worked really Thanks, hard at doing. Um, hi everyone. Uh, uh, my name is John Orr. Uh, I am a member of the Mayor's Commission for People with Disabilities. But my my main work. Uh, in the cities with arts and culture and yeah, recreation. She can um, come so off of me. I know she is. So you know, that's, I that's, know that's, she that's is. The mule coming off I'm the mule, coming off a of mute, and then now we're going to hear the muse. <laughs> oh, come on now. Oh, hey. my, 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 my. Well, well, well. Our guest had some amazing stories. Hospital, too, because I was in a coma for about a month and a half. But because of God, and I am still here. Because when I first came home, I was walking with a walker. But I can walk now. And in January, uh, January 2nd of this year, uh, we had to make the unfortunate decision to remove both of our children from their ventilators and allow them to be at peace and at rest. Um, and that by itself was the biggest decision, the biggest storm that um, I can ever say in my short life that I've gone yeah. through. The entire time that I was in the hospital, first time ever in my life, all I did was cry and pray. I know, that's right. Two years ago, we lost my mother and my father three months apart and my twin sister. But the Lord, had, I still had six sisters remaining and we all are very close very close. You know, my wife and I have gone through the roller coaster of caring for two critically ill children. I mean, I, I have watched my daughter be resuscitated and my son be resuscitated several times. Um, my wife had to resuscitate our son at home. Um, we had lost consciousness as a result of the disease. Um, I've watched my daughter cold at least 17 to 20 times in one day. If a robin can say thank you, well, on the birds are still singing, we can too. Let's give thanks. We'll oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his, uh, his mercy endures so, for you know, I really thank my older sister, and I tell her that all the time. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful that he left me with all my sisters. I think what's important about giving thanks is the fact that he didn't have to do it, but he did. Okay, is that Daryl about to take a tech? Yeah! Oh, not at all. Go ahead, Deacon yeah. Presley. Go ahead, Deacon yeah. Presley. <laughs> I was a walking deacon one time. Uh, Sister T could testify that to that. Yes! Oh, yeah? My sister, I'm thankful for you the most, even though I get angry with you. <laughs> but uh, I want you to know I love you, no matter what we're both going through. And I give thanks to a man that's in the hospital tonight. But he'll call me to see if I'm all right. Richard, I don't know you personally, but the, the inspiration in you inspires me to do a little better than what I'm doing. I thank God for regulating my mind. I'll just say, um, while we're talking about being thankful to him, it is never let your troubles blind you from your daily blessings. Thank you for mercy. Thank you for understanding. Thank you for wisdom. Thank you for parents. Thank you for love. Thank you for kindness. Thank you for humility. Thank you for peace. Thank you for prosperity. Say thank you in advance for what's already yours. So yes, we have so many things going on, but when you wake up in the morning, that's a blessing. 
When you can get out of your bed, that's a blessing. When you can call your loved ones, that's a blessing. You may not have a mansion, but you have a home. That's a blessing. You may not have a Somehow we even got the birds singing through COVID. I was just hyped because I thought it was just going to be, oh, school's off, you know. We're going to go back in a couple a couple days, maybe like a day or two. And then after that first week passed, then, then it started to set in like, all right, uh, it might be a little while before I go back to school. And then after that first month, I was like, all right, so what's our new normal? This, this is our new normal. We're just going to be in. And then like... What Brandon said, when Brandon said it's gonna be our new normal, <clears throat> to me, it's just like it's gonna to get to a certain point where it's like everybody gonna get tired of it, and it's just like you just gonna do what you want to do. What would you say, uh, Mr. Doug, to young people? Because a lot of us don't believe that it's real for real. Oh so no, it's real. Uh, in the beginning, they, they they said like children couldn't get it, young folks couldn't get it, animals, and since the pandemic started spreading. They're now saying more and more every day that children are getting it, and the number is increasing. Uh, Practice social distancing and uh, wear your mask. On the birds are still singing, we even give a shout out to our seniors. And they shout out back at us. Let's hear what they uh, had to say. Talk to, when I used to hear, when I was younger, you could talk to people. They said that one day you'd be able to talk to people and you'd be able to see them on your phone. And here, and here it is, and, I, and that I enjoy. As long as it's not me on showing, you showing me. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it, nothing's going to go back, so we, we might as well try to learn as much as we can. For 15, 25 years, I was a teacher, instructor in access technology for a person with visual problems. And so I had to learn new software adaptive software to teach you. Yes. Yeah, when you told me about, you know, what was taking place this evening as far as uh, seniors, I knew I definitely wanted to be a part of at least listening in to hear what was uh, what was going on. And I have to say, while I'm not telling my age, yes, I am a senior, which means that I am over 65 <laughs> and all those other great, wonderful uh you know, things. And again, all you can do is count it as less. And then the games that I play are Jelly Jam Last. <laughs> uh, let, me, let me tell you some of the rest of them. Sweet, uh, Candy Crush, <laughs> Candy Crush Jelly, New <laughs> Candy Pop, Jewel Ancient, Candy Bomb, Lollipop 2. <laughs> Lollipop 2. <laughs> All that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Now you know we gotta have time for our parents. Know your children, because a lot of times we as parents want to act like we want to get an attitude with the teacher. Now I'm gonna say this: on some issues, some teachers may sometimes be a little over the top. But if you know your child, you'll know when this, you know, to receive what the teacher says and when not. But can you share with the other fathers the importance of being involved with your children in school? It's very important. I know as my my story of not having a father made me ten times more appreciative of being a father. Um, AJ, when they were in school, the the challenge here was that when they were bickering to stop the bickering was Aaron was her paid tutor so he always went to <laughs> <laughs> I paid him fair. To <laughs> no fair not fair you didn't come home and just do nothing get yourself together change them your, your school clothes get a snack and get right to the table and do your homework it wasn't an option that you do your homework when you feel like it no no you want to do your homework within a half an hour time from coming home from school. So you could, you know, be fresh. And then when you finish, you can go somewhere and sit down and go to sleep or do something, but your homework is completed. So those are things that I just didn't tolerate. But the reason um, why I did it that way is because she needed help. Um, Aaron knew what the subject was. He could he could help them. And it was good, it was that new math that I was like, listen, I need mm -hmm. a in order to go over the new math. By the time I read it and went over it, he already knew it. So. Aaron was always doing things around the house to make extra money. So in order to get them closer, I was like, this is what we're going to do. You finish your homework, and Terry, you do your homework. 
and then you had to tutor her in math. And mm-hmm. he could not get paid until she learned the lesson. Mm. And boy, boy, it was hard. Oh, <laughs> oh my lord! Like, like <laughs> shit, TT, listen, one plus one is two. I don't know what it is. I don't know. I don't. I don't understand. I'm like TT. It's okay. And sometimes we just like to laugh. <laughs> Where's the room down there? Go that way. Okay, right. Sister T, she said, "Well, councilman." Now, you know you ain't make the last one they invited you to. You're going to be on this one. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's right. Old yeah, school. Right, back, right there. Old back. school. You know what well, due to the COVID virus, uh, you got to come in by yourself. And to the wonderful, Miss Resourceful, uh, get back to you, the communicator. The one who... Party is, off! You know how to get it. Real men do cry. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they do. That's right, that's right. I've been hearing a lot of uh, real men stuff, especially this month. Real, is it real men wear pink and real men cry? <laughs> 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 so you know, uh, BET really appreciates being invited to the show. What we do is we give kids who want to talk about what's going on, uh, current events, who wants to talk about everything that's going on, give them an opportunity to have a voice, to have a say on what. Uh, happening in their communities, talking about uh, social injustice from uh, from that to COVID and education, talking about going back to school. You know, that was our very first show, I believe. So what I seen from the video um, was definitely um, activities that were for the youth that they uh, that BET has um, came into their program. It looks like maybe youth from anywhere from um, say maybe eight maybe eight or six and older. Richard Washington has founded truly one of the greatest organizations of all time because this is one organization that has touched so many generations consistently. I just want to, my my favorite highlight on Roman BT is when we go to the Poconos. When we went to the Poconos, the first time Uh I did it, it was was very fun. BET, that's our family. Like, if we need something, like, they there for us. Mr. Washington is there for us. It don't matter what time of the day it is, what time of the night that it is. When I tell you this is my family away from home, this is my family away from home. Like, I love BET. It's the best. When the birds are still singing, even the young people have a voice. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Please, please be be yourself. No worries. That's what I want to hear. We all want to hear the truth from young people. That's the only way we can address what we all talking about. Uh, uh, the thing about us as people, like, it's human nature. Like, no one likes change. No one wants change. But it happens regardless. You know what I mean? It, it happens regardless of what we do because some things are just out of our control. Uh, what was your mom and your grandma and all them like when it comes to education? What type of uh, you know support did you have? Um, the support was always there. I remember my mom was whenever I came home with the homework, my mom would be there at the table until eight o'clock at night. One thing that when you're working with youth, they keep you on your toes. Hey, Jada. <laughs> Hi, um, I want you to share with us how music has been instrumental in your life. Starting in the church as a child was a great foundation to wake me up and realize that singing was a passion and that it was something that I wanted to pursue and take serious. So tell them how we feel. Do we get mad sometimes when they be honest, even though we might appreciate it later? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I heard it all in your voice. I heard it all in that year. <laughs> you don't even have to say anything else. She said, I'm going to be real careful. So you have any advice, thoughts, or, and how was it for you as a big brother? I'm not going to ask Satira were you a good one or not, just in case. But tell me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, 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 I mean, I, I, I will say this. Like, me me and my sister did fight a lot. I, I will say that. Like, we did, like, go back and forth. We did bigger a lot on, like, we did have, like, our opinions. We didn't agree on that, but I know at the end of the day, she did listen to me, and I did listen to her, so I'll say The Birds even wanted to take some time to appreciate two of our authors, Hildebrand Peltzer and Reverend Horton. And even af- and after that, you, you wrote a piece on uh, failing black boys, and if you, can, if you can touch on that as well. Which was a, 
uh, state facility, juvenile correctional facility for juvenile boys from all across the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. It was in that setting that I decided to become a principal because of the um, level of illiteracy, the le level of despair, uh, the level of just concern for mostly black boys who were incarcerated. This was their second and third time incarcerated. Mm. And so at, at the age of like 14, 15 and 16. And so it was in that setting that I decided to pursue a career in education. And that's how I got into education. Um, and that is what has influenced my perspective on education through incarcerated youth from that beginning. And so um, God has blessed me to write uh, several books. And my newest book is called Poems, Prose and Proclamations. And it is inspirational. Um, I come right from the community. I'm born and raised in South Philly, Church of Redeemer Baptist for over 20 years. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, yeah. I, now, what about them life lessons on The Birds Are Still Singing? We've made it through with prayer. Um, and we have prayed like nobody's business. And, and the only thing, as you said, that keeps us, my brother, is, is trust in him and faith in him. Because we come to situations and we have no control at all. And all we can do is trust God. One of my favorite stories is the... Uh, disciples on the boat with Jesus and they encounter a storm and because they're so focused on everything that's going on around them the waves crashing and the wind blowing they miss the point that they've got Jesus on the boat with them <laughs> <Come on. laughs> and that you don't have to go crazy if you've got the master the creator of the universe that controls the the the, the land the sea and everything in it the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof that we don't have to lose our mind in our storm if we realize that we got Jesus on the boat with us. Yeah, um, I'm listening and he's speaking to my heart. Um, Praise God. Yeah, because... Um, Let's go to the hospital. Mm. And the doctor said if we wouldn't have gotten her there in time, mm. she may not be with us. And wow. so, you know, and that, that's God. Uh, my Lord. Because I know how it is. I know how it is pastoring our folk also. Because uh, many a times, you know, uh, they, they, they may think that we may be superhuman. When we're hurting at our most vulnerable time, yet we get that call in the middle of the night and we have to minister. Mm -hmm. We have to minister. And, 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 and we, we, we do it because God has called us to do it. Uh, luckily for me, in, um, in late 2011, I had a spiritual awakening. Um, I was arrested by Philadelphia police. I was um, incarcerated. I was sent over to the, uh, uh, the House of Corrections here in um, the city of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, where I had a spiritual awakening. I, 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 I found my, my true calling, my true purpose. I gave my life over to the Lord, um, and, and I um, have since become a new creature. Two questions. Uh... Uh, because we're talking about communication and I don't, I don't as an episode of the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air is when Will's father comes back into his life and he promises Will that he's going to take him on a road trip with him but what he does is he begins to say I'm, I'm going he's going to bell on him so he talks to Uncle Phil and he wants Uncle Phil to do his dirty work for him before he leaves uh, he says no I ain't gonna do your dirty work for you you have to do it for yourself and then Will comes in and Will is ready to go and his father tells, says to him, I can't take you with me this time. He's belling on his son again. When he leaves, it's this powerful moment where uh, Will uh, begins to say, how come he doesn't want me? It was great seeing you, son. You too, Lou. I'm sorry, Will. <laughs> you know what, actually, this works out better for me. You know, the Slimmies of Summer come to class wearing next to nothing, you know what I mean? Will, it's all right to be angry. Hey, well, why should I be mad? I'm saying, at least he said goodbye this time. I just wish I hadn't wasted my money buying this stupid present. I'm, I'm sorry, I, you know, if there was 
something that I can Hey, you know do. what? You ain't got to do no, nothing, Uncle Phil. Hey, you know, ain't like I'm still five years old, you know? Ain't like I'm going to be sitting up every night asking my mom, when's daddy coming home, you know? Who needs him? Hey, he wasn't there to teach me how to shoot my first basket, but I learned, didn't I? Hey, I got pretty damn good at it, too, didn't I, yeah, Uncle Phil? Did. Got through my first day without him, right? Mm. I learned how to drive. I learned how to shave. I learned how to fight without him. I had 14 great birthdays without him. He never even sent me a card. Die out with him! I ain't need him then, and I don't need him now. Well, well. Nah, you know what, Uncle Phil? I'm going to get through college without him. I'm going to get a great job without him. I'm going to marry me a beautiful honey, and I'm going to me a whole bunch of kids. I'm going to be a better father than he ever was. And I sure as hell don't need him for that, because ain't a damn thing he could ever teach me about how to love my kids. How come he don't want me, man? I was touched by the um, episode with um, Will Smith. I had seen that before, mm -hmm. and I can re I can relate so much to that. Um, where I grew up without a father. Emmett Till was my George Floyd. He was my Rayshard Brooks, Sandra Bland, and Breonna Taylor. He was 14 when he was killed, and I was only 15 years old at the time. I will never ever forget the moment when it became so clear that he could easily have been me. You can't um, give a young person a pass when they engage in some type of behavior um, that goes towards destroying the, the lives of another person. If you have people who are in and out of the criminal justice system, right, mm -hmm. and they're trying to get their lives together, well, again, you have institutions that have systematic roadblocks that will prevent you from getting your life together. And they need investment in them to feel like it's worth trying to pursue this. It's worth trying to change me. It's worth doing the work. And that's the thing that keeps people from, you know, picking up a gun and, and solving a dispute that way or going out in the street and settling beef like that. That's what keeps people coming back. They know I have something that I've built in me and my community is investing in me and I have a pardon on the line and I have expungement. That gives people hope. Like you just talked about, letting young people know that there's consequences for your actions. That's when it goes back to us as a village and as a community to look out for one another. And we can't leave out the parents. Uh, we know sometimes parents need to be parents and not friends. Um, right, sometimes right. it cross the line. See, some I think the thing is, we've really got to sit down and be honest with our children, right? And have a whole, wholehearted conversation with our kids and talk to them. They are people too. I know a lot of parents who are doing what they're supposed to be doing, right? Yeah. With their children, with their boys, right? Yeah. And the boys decide to do what they want to do, right? Mm -hmm. For whatever reason, mm -hmm. right? And sometimes we hurt more than help. So if you had to think about mm -hmm. some do's and don'ts, what would you say the things are that we should do and some of the things that as parents and as community members, we should not do in order to help the situation? Young people respond to people based upon if they think you care about them. And they know when you don't. They, they know the very, very difference between caring or a person that's just being condescending and trying to address their issue. And I think it really comes down to this question of investment. You know, for parents, it's investment in time in your kids. And you don't need money to do that, but you do need to know where they are and who they're hanging out with and where they're going and be all up in their face. That's how my parents were when I was coming up. You know, we, we weren't anywhere that my mom didn't know where we were. And we weren't at anybody's house if my mom didn't know their mom and their grandma and their aunties. Um, that's, that's the question of making your kids know that you love them, that, that they can always come home. And that's so important. There are a lot of resources out there, but I remember it wasn't an option whether I went to church or not. It wasn't an option whether I went to the rec center or the boys and girls club or to the library. Now, because it's an option, there are open seats in those centers, but mm. uh, but no open seats on the steps right in front of the door because everybody's crowding out. So as we talk to our parents and community members too, there are some of the old ways that we need to bring back because there are resources there. We just have to make it not an option, especially for our young people. I could be 21 years old, and if you're living in the house, 
You better go out there and get a job. If not, you ain't living here. Not the option. Hey, 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 brother Watson, it's crazy you said it. The only reason why I went to college, right, one of the key reasons was because, like, my mom had a rule that after 12th grade, if you going to school, you getting a job, but you ain't staying here. Like, you got to figure yeah. it out. Like, you're not, you're not going to lay in the house all day long without doing nothing, right? Brandon, what's up? Hello, Miss D. Hi, how you doing, love? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? I'm wonderful. Is there? I know you got a, you got something to say to Councilman tonight. Do you have any idea of what he can do to help uh, our, your youth, your your population? Step number one, I would say to help the youth in, in my community, especially. We like, I know that young people we like to be attached from the government, not try to like connect ourselves to it. We don't like to believe in it. So one thing you can do, try to influence us, try to get into our communities, talk to our children, you know, talk to people like me, you know, because all we see is what you're doing and we don't, sometimes it seems like we don't see much, to be honest. I know that things are happening, but a lot of the youth don't, you know, they don't get a chance, they don't get a chance to have the opportunities to meet people and see things, see the changes. They don't see it because they don't see it in their own homes, they don't see it in their own community. So. That's why I would say, you know, get get into the communities, talk to us. Yes. What we just need is clarification, like clarification of what we're trying to do. Because I always, always, I'm always hands down to help to any way I can. Now, Tara. Yes. Yes, we're gonna go ahead with the announcement, sweetie. I have an announcement. Yesterday, City Council's Committee on Law and Government advanced an historic package of bills that I sponsored with Council Members Isaiah Thomas and Kenyatta, Kenyatta Johnson. If Philadelphia hey. passes legislation, we will be one of the largest cities in the nation with this type of labor protection. Today, City Wonderful. Committee <laughs> Housing Advance are bill to extend the city's eviction diversion program, which has helped hundreds of tenants and landlords find alternatives to eviction. Thanks for the announcements. We also have resources, opportunities, and networking. And that's why I'm really um, big on like pushing in resources um, mm -hmm. because there's so many programs and resources and connections with people. And it's important that people know that they can reach out to their councilman's office, the state rep's office, the senator's office, all of the elected official offices to reach out to them for support, for help. That's what they're there for. Now, when you say a lack of food, I have never seen as much food being given out during this time period now. So if someone say they're hungry now, it's just because they want to be hungry. When you expose yourself to even different things, People are interested and you never know who's watching. You don't know what that connection may may lead to. So then you follow up with the DM and then you hope they respond. And if they don't, then you send the email and then you just keep networking. You just keep networking. Yeah, that's beautiful. I'm, I'm, I'm secretly hoping that uh, I'm going to be able to get in touch with you and talk to you about being a mentor with our program at some point. Uh, depending on what you have going on, you sound like you have a lot of beautiful plans, uh, but definitely something that's in the back of my mind. Because uh, I think it's beautiful to hear you share this with a lot of our young people. So you would love to do some type of internship inside. Maybe, maybe um, to talk talk to councilman about maybe there might be some opportunities when you're home sometime off a of school break that you can do an internship um, inside the office. This this is us, formally and informally inviting you to be to talk to uh let us give you an interview yep <laughs> just, just talk yeah i'll be there yeah. all right 30 seconds or less what do you want to leave our people with your voice is powerful share it i'll say for as a sibling wise i'll say just listen honestly like if you're a bigger bro older brother or older sister you gotta, you gotta listen to the younger sibling because they probably be going through something else that you may not know that they was going through. Right, you know my sister Tita, a young lady got pregnant, she had to go down south. You know, oh. that whole school was like, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, get, get. And I couldn't leave South Philly like my other friends did, and I'm in the 12th grade. 
Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, great, yeah. right. To uh, write our stories. Uh, I think that um, creative writing is a way for young people, older people to, to get out frustration and anger and get it on paper and then even do some spoken word and, and uh, uh, open mic nights because a lot of times we're getting stuff out that's inside of us and it can really help us to, to just sh shed that and then um, leave better than when we came in. So. Best forms of communication that I've had with students, and I've le I'm learning this as a parent, uh, is listening. Mm. And if you're listening to young people and they're sharing, not just young people, but anybody, if you're really listening to them, they'll begin to tell you what's going on inside of them. And sometimes you hear their fears. These guns were inside somebody's house. Mm -hmm. So yeah, mom should be underneath your bed, inside your drawer, right? <laughs> and just being notes. That's regulating <laughs> your own household. And I truly believe that old school is necessary. Don't throw that away. Mm -hmm. Don't throw yeah. it away. We really need it. Uh, Councilman, there's, there's a good saying that the, the older people say to you, don't let people be glad to see you come and glad to see you go. Let us think in terms of our actions, as our youth observe us as leaders and how we act and are seen according to them. Um, I just want to remind people that it was people just like us who built this world, who designed this world, and who made it inaccessible. So it can be people just like us right now, today, who can change the entire thing and make it more equitable for everybody. As Christians, since we're on a faith-based call, we got a duty. Mm -hmm. We got a duty. Mm -hmm. And one, we should be witnessing by our actions. And a lot of times, that's coming outside the church. I'm just being frank with you, right? And being on the street and being on the ground and, 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 and thinking about, like, when the last time you witnessed to somebody. I'm going to leave you guys with, remember to love each other. God said above all things, love is the most important. It's not happy people who are thankful. It's the thankful people who are who are happy. Um, and and and, and councilman, you know I love you. I, I love you to pieces. Uh, Tiffany, thank you, sweetie. And you know uh, how many times that you and I talked and you calmed me down. And you, I guess you said, "Boy, she's crazy." That's a crazy woman. <laughs> not at all, sister T. Some Richard, my brother, my 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 friend, my compadre. I love you to pieces, and what we're gonna do is, a, is a, and everybody else that's on, we love you, and we're gonna get ready to get out of here. Well, Atira, Aaron, Brandon, and Jay Olivia, we celebrate you, and so you can't see me too well, but I'm giving you a standing ovation. Yes! <laughs> it's going yes. fashionable. Hallelujah. Well, you can Thank go ahead and, and play that. You can you play that, because that'll, that'll take us out. And let me journey on. Mm. All right, sir. Is that Dr. Watson? <laughs> no, it, you know it. Let me still I rise, never to give up, never to give in against all eyes. And as I say, and then Richard give it to play us a, a going out song, I always say to everybody as you go home, I love you, and you can't do nothing about it. And night night. Brought us from a mighty long way, and he ain't done yet. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. You think he's done yet, Sister T? No, no, he's not done yet. And I said thank you that he's not done yet. And that's because the birds are still singing. Now I say, so on behalf of the board and host of RRCDC, as well as myself, Richard Washington, for bringing everybody together, we say thank you to all of our guests, our Zoomers, and our Facebook Live audience. Again, we say thank you.